Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode four of our series, Meal Planning. We've gone through kind of the theory and the goals of the structure, why you'd want to employ some principled structured eating, some meal planning for yourself, as well as the ability to be flexible. Also then the pre and the post-workout meals, those were a little bit longer uh, sessions than we usually take because those are just so critically important. And now we're gonna be able to kind of smash in all the other meals into one episode because now it's just a matter of distributing those calories where it works best. And I'll start, Adam, just by saying if, if you work out in the morning or the evening, I think that covers probably 80 to 90% of people. I'm one of those weird people that love to train in the middle of the day. I just love that to kind of be my lunchtime. But um, I, I would say that it, it's a great opportunity to have uh, you know, protein distributed pretty evenly. You're going to have a midday meal, let's, let's call it lunch, with some protein. But I like, because I'm saving a lot of carbohydrates for pre and post, I like for that particular midday meal to be a little bit lighter. So it may be just a chicken breast salad or something. Maybe I'm saving my carbs for somewhere else. Um, but then also if I'm training in the morning, then, and I'm doing kind of a lighter lunch, that means my evening meal, I, I can ha in, afford a little bit of a larger meal. I can have some carbohydrate then. So I'm really looking for my pre and post to, to be one block of solid nutrition. And then I'm looking for the midday and the other end of the day, morning or evening to be another place of, of real solid, almost whole food nutrition. Then I'm probably going to work in a snack or two in a couple other places to just pretty much based on hunger. So when you're looking at all these variables for a particular client, Adam, because we said, look, we, we work with a lot of different people. How do you explain this and try and make it work for everybody as, as individuals? Yeah, you've got to find that point of access to your clients that helps them understand this. And um, this is probably the most flexible part of food intake. Now we've covered pre and post workout nutrition. It's really up to the client on how they um, spend this food, so to speak. So one of the biggest pain points I like to find with clients is where are you hungriest throughout the day? And that's where I teach them let's have an anchor meal here. So just like you had mentioned your chicken salad, an anchor meal is typically a protein, a fibrous carb, a starchy carb. Uh, this tends to sedate hunger quite a bit. And once they have that, we can distribute the uh, protein, carbs, and fats elsewhere in the day. But I think that anchor meal is really important because we're addressing hunger there. This is going to be what helps keep them ahead of the game in terms of hunger and keeps them more comfortable. And then they can kind of pivot from there. And for some clients, that might be dinner with family. For some clients, it might be actually an anchor meal at work. Maybe they're more prone to stress or emotional eating at work with that. Or maybe people are just bringing food in and that tempts them and makes them hungry. So they might want more fullness earlier in the day. Yeah, I think, I think that's perfectly said. And I only have two small points to really add to that. Number one is you mentioned comfort and satiety. And sometimes I will use a small snack just to make sure I can really control hunger at another place. So I, I mentioned I train in the middle of the day. I have my post-workout shake. Then I'm going to go home and I'm probably going to eat in maybe three or four hours dinner but I'm, I, I'm, I'm churning through energy pretty quickly at that point. I've trained, I've done a pretty intense cardio plus weight training. And so if I do a little snack before I go home, I'm not hitting the kitchen starving. And that's kind of important because I can go home, eat, I'm not, not in any kind of a prep right now, and I can just start mowing down food left and right before we're even sitting down to dinner. But I just find that's just so much easier if I have you know, just a little preemptive snack. But I will say in prep, you also not only have to put food, as you said, Adam, where you are the hungriest and you're really planning for those energy needs, but you should also pick a part of the day where it's easiest to sacrifice. Don't only think about your hunger. Think about where you're going to do the hard work of dieting because we know being in a calorie deficit, you're not always going to feel your best. You're going to incur some hunger. You want to stay away from that, that ravenous hunger. You want to stay away from hypoglycemia and just feeling lousy but you got to have some stretches in the day where you're kind of paying the price. And, and I would look for those. I would look for where's the easiest part of my day to really be hungry. 
And I would always pick those times when I'm the busiest. If I've got a lot of meetings, a lot of clients, a lot of appointments where it's, I just don't really have time to eat, then I'm, I'm looking at that saying, okay, that's great. That's where I can really kind of, you know, win the show, so to speak. And I'll put my meals in these other places and that's going to be my, my longer span. Yeah. When you're busier, you tend to be less hungry. I know me when I'm at shows with clients, I might not eat till five or six o'clock aside from breakfast. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when traveling, we're, we're kind of forced to do intermittent fasting, whether we like it or not. Right. Essentially. And then <laughs> I think, man, why can't I do this during the week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you're around food, just sitting in your office, it's a little, little harder to, uh, to not get up and, and grab that next meal. Absolutely. So it's definitely much easier. That's a great way of explaining that. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, stay tuned. We got one more episode. We're going to wrap this up with a little bit of a summary and we're going to talk about uh, quality issues with food, some other timing nuances. So uh, hang in there and we got one more for you. We'll see you next time in Contest Prep University.